Hey guys, I just wanted to go on the record as publicly disavowing in the possible strongest terms, in the strongest possible terms, I should say, this Drew Brees guy. Yeah, not my quarterback. He's a Hall of Famer. But what does that matter when you fail to take the knee for Black Lives Matter and Colin Kaepernick? Yes, you could have been excused for being ignorant when it first started. You know, like, wow, why is that guy taking a knee? Uh, did he hurt himself or something? But it's 2020 now. It's long been established that only Klansmen would not take a knee. N not only not take a knee, but criticize those who do. Um... All right, I can't continue this trolling any longer. But, uh, totally pretty milk toast comments by Drew Brees yesterday. And this is the long march of political correct wokeness. Now we're attacking Hall of Fame quarterbacks with Super Bowl rings. You know, I can, I can understand more if it was Philip Rivers or something. Or some guy without a ring, Carson Palmer or something. But we're criticizing fucking Drew Brees, who's not the best quarterback ever, but he's one of the best. He's up there, you know, with like Brady, as far as stats goes. I think he's got Brady beat in passing yard, and she's got a Super Bowl ring. So he's not like Joe Montana, but he's... He's pretty legacy. Um, saying he doesn't support... Like, he's just against the idea of kneeling for the anthem. I'm glad we're having this argument, because there's no goddamn football. There's no sports of any kind, but we got to figure out something to fight about. I'm still against it. Just so my audience knows. There's just certain things... Um, that you just have a visceral reaction to. Uh, I always consider take, yeah, I mean, from high school, standing for the anthem. I wouldn't kneel for another country's anthem. Well, that's that's a lie. I would, probably, I would if it was like a Nazi German, Germany anthem. Okay, then maybe I would take a knee. Or, but even Iran, I wouldn't take a knee for. You know, because the people are good. It's just the regime that sucks. Maybe North Korea I would kneel for. Um, but then again, where do you draw the line? But yeah, the point is, this is just a long march of PC-ness, you know. Like, back in the day, maybe it all started okay, you know. Like, uh, don't hate other people, or if you do, don't express it in public. It's it's not very nice. But now we're getting to the point where if you don't agree with kneeling for the anthem because of all these police shootings, um, you're canceled, bro. I think next is going to be, why the fuck aren't you taking a knee? Don't you care about black lives? So... In a way, it's more difficult to go against the grain and be politically incorrect than ever because of all the social pressure and everything that can happen. But at the same time, now seems to be the opportune time because we're talking about milk toast views that would have always been very normal. They're now being chastised and there's power in standing up to them. If you know a guy named Clay Travis, he's this really arrogant, outspoken sports uh, commentator. And he's on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and uh, Periscope. He does his own media. And then he also does shows, but he came up through his own media. And his whole shtick is... Um, He's very politically incorrect. 
I mean, he's not like a Klansman or something, but he still will go against things like this. He'll go against, uh, you know, LeBron for kowtowing to the Chai Coms or other things that the sports media won't say or touch. But he basically takes, well, some of his stances are go against the grain. I'm talking about, you know, like in the views of your average American. But this doesn't even go against the grain. It's like, yeah, I think kneeling for the anthem and in front of the flag is disrespectful. And this is why. And, you know, I don't support it. I don't know what he said about any anyone else. If he was like, oh, these people should should be chastised. I don't think that's what he was saying. He was just saying in his view, it's wrong. So if we're to have a country and a society... We have to have basic norms, you know. Some people don't agree with that norm. I mean, okay. But it's kind of div divisive and creates more problems. If 100% of people don't stand for the flag, it's not the biggest problem in the world. But, uh, you know, it doesn't help things. It's not as disruptive as, as looting and rioting. Now that we, we can't agree whether that's wrong or right. Some people say it's justified and some people say, you know, hell no. I don't know. That was just another ridiculous thing. 2020, the, every day there's an interesting news item. Without exception, pretty much. Um, more and more people are getting killed by the police protesting. And it's like, you see these videos of these people wailing on the police and, oh, why aren't the police doing something? And then the police do something and somebody gets killed with beanbag rounds or gets crippled by a beanbag round. I personally don't protest. Um, would I ever protest? Maybe. If I was really motivated to. I don't protest. I don't bar fight. I don't pick fights with drunks or crazy people. I avoid panhandlers. Uh, this is a low risk strategy to avoid potential dangerous situations. Okay, if everyone didn't protest, you're taking away a, a potential powerful strategy. But I would just suggest to individuals that they they don't partake in such risky activities. Yeah, you know, my girlfriend and I, she, I wouldn't go near these protests just because shit can happen and it's chaotic and anarchic and you don't know what the fuck could happen. I saw enough videos online be like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be famous online for some shit that went down either by me or against me. Um, yeah. And my girlfriend said like, God, I don't want you going near any protest. Which, sometimes she's annoying, but at least she's protective. But, I don't know, this shit is ridiculous. Yeah, these protesters are wielding a lot of power. I think they're definitely going to make changes. For one, the police are definitely going to redo their, their internal procedures, both hiring and discipline, to avoid another incident like this. I mean, how do you avoid police killings? It's kind of unavoidable over time and through large numbers, but you can at least get better at it and have better procedures for dealing with someone who has an incident. So I think in aggregate, the, pro the protests are effective and successful, but like, I'm not going to risk my life protesting for some shit. On the flip side, I think they're, they're going to have... Uh, there, there's going to be negative consequences as well, both to these communities, like inner cities that have had these protests, people leaving and shit, potential ghettoization, people droning out protests. The you know, average American is going to turn on the protesters and start to hate them, maybe even striking back like in Fishville, Philadelphia. Uh... So yeah, for every successful movement, there's 
That's what they say in physics. For every for every action, there's a equal reaction. It's just hard to anticipate exactly what those are going to be. And you know, you see online everyone everyone's narrative for all these situations, whether it be hands up, don't shoot. Which apparently never actually fucking happened, but that doesn't stop it from being the slogan for Black Lives Matter. At least use I can't breathe, because that's actually been said. Although it should be clarified what was actually going on in those situations, but I definitely hate false narratives, not just of these groups, but of all groups. Because they're they're just fucking cheap. And actually undermine like I hate the false narratives of other groups, but if I'm part of a group and there's a false narrative, I don't like that either. Because you're just undermining your own fucking movement. Even if you're getting cheap points, you're delegit you're delegitimizing your own fucking movement. And it seems like every group has a fucking false narrative. Um, to one degree or another, some are worse than others. Yeah, so the false narrative we're seeing is, hands up, don't shoot. The cops are executing people for no reason at all. Um, uh, George Lloyd got killed for using a $20 bill. Well, that's not the only thing he did. He apparently resisted arrest vigorously. But... Rather than help solve the problem and say, hey, people should stop resisting arrest. Uh, they say things, oh, like the cops are just executing people. I think because it creates more outrage, gives them more power. It's better for arguing. But I still hate the fake narratives. And, and a lot of different groups use them. The alt-right says, uh, you know, Heather Heyer died of a heart attack. The car didn't even touch her. And little innocent, what's his name? Jam little innocent James Fields. He was just a good little boy driving around, and somebody flashed a weapon, and uh, he had no choice. He had to drive his car directly into a, a fucking crowd, which that claim was debunked at the trial. But it doesn't stop people from saying it. Trayvon Martin, he just bought a bag of Skittles. He was just walking home whistling. Um, and on and on and on. Um, yeah, the Nazis didn't execute anybody. These were detention centers and, you know, it was war. The Allies bombed all the infrastructure. So even though they wanted to really, really badly, they couldn't keep the internees fed effectively. Well, that's what happened there. Yeah, false narratives abound. Even the more milquetoast ones on Twitter, like uh, between normie Republicans and normie Democrats. But that's more just like mainline arguing. You know, like all of this is on Trump. Um, you know, his claim of making America great again, yeah, obviously it hasn't happened. Of course, it's not on all on him. Um, so I don't know. I'm just tired of it. I'd rather have uh, you know, real conversations with real people that don't say hands up, don't shoot, or James Woods was a good boy. Uh, James Fields. Anyway, whatever. That's all for this morning. Everyone have a good day.